Hello, and welcome to another edition of Interviewing the Legends, brought to you by the Publicity Works Agency, devoted to promoting musicians and authors worldwide. Call us today at 941 877 one five five two to start your free publicity evaluation. Remember, we shine only when we make you shine. Please welcome the host of Interviewing the Legends, music journalist, author, and entrepreneur, Ray Shasho. Hello once again, everyone. I'm your host, Ray Shasho, and welcome to another edition of Interviewing the Legends on VBS Radio, brought to you by the Publicity Works Agency. Call us today at 941-877-1552 or email us at publicityworksagency.com. And uh, remember, we shine only when we make you shine. It's Rolling Stones songs deconstructed, says Bernard Fowler, explaining the title of his new album, Inside Out. I just took these songs and turned them inside out. Bernard Fowler has another gig, too. He sung and played percussion with the Rolling Stones on stage and in the studio since 1988. At Soundcheck, somewhere along their 215 zip code tour, he started riffing on a Stones song as dramatically delivered spoken word, and the band dug it. Nick said, Bernard, I've heard Rolling Stones songs done a lot of ways, but never like this, Fowler recalls. I said, well, you know what? When the tour is over, I'm going to cut it. And he said, you should. That's all I had to hear. That was the green light. And that's how it came to be that one of Rock's and Pop's most sought-after singers doesn't sing a note on his new record. Lots of people have celebrated Keith Richards' iconic riffs, Mick Jagger's trademark cow and stunt, and the Rolling Stones' blazing live show, but there's never been such a thoughtful, soul-bearing, and thoroughly original appreciation of the band's lyrics. In order to do that, Fowler pared away the chord changes and even the melodies and left only the words, then declaimed them like the world's coolest preacher atop slamming grooves powered by a who's who of Cracker Jack players. It's not quite singing, but only a peerless vocalist could pull it off so powerfully. His incantations seething with righteous anger and foreboding and desire. Uh, Inside Out demonstrates what cover versions are supposed to be, reinterpretations that are not only a vehicle for personal expression, but also put the material in a new light. People hear their favorite songs all the time, but sometimes they don't really hear them, Fowler says. This is a way to hear them all over again, appreciate them in a whole new way. But the beauty of Inside Out is that it provides an opportunity to appreciate Bernard Fowler in a whole new way to. Please welcome musician, producer, songwriter, actor, and singer for the Rolling Stones, Bernard Fowler to Interviewing the Legends. Hello, Bernard. Hello, hello, hello. How are you? I'm doing good, man. Where are you? You're in Toronto today, aren't you? That's good. Yeah, I'm in Toronto. Hey, man, where did you get that stuff from you, Ed? Uh, that, that, that's from your website. <laughs> that's pretty damn good. I know, man. <laughs> I, you know, I actually had to shorten it a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> Very cool. You, uh, you and me are about a year apart. Uh, I'm a year older than you, so we we share a lot of the same experiences in music and and that kind of thing. And okay. uh, you mentioned uh, to an interviewer uh, about Beetle Boots, and you know, I did the same thing. I, I was hounding my mom for Beetle Boots as well, but then. After I wore them for a bunch of times, it, it, they were very narrow. <laughs> <laughs> but they were the wrong kind. Mine fit perfect. Oh, they fit perfect. Huh? Did, you had the zipper on the side and everything. No, no, no zipper. Oh no, I had the it's, zipper. Um, no, these are like classic Chelsea boots. No zipper. Oh, I got the wrong ones then, huh? Yep, yep. <laughs> You know, I love I love the way I love your voice. And one thing 
one thing I really like is I, I love when you did the standards with Charlie Watts' quintet. You, you did I've Got a Crush on You. There's so many classic songs I could hear you singing, too, like Nat King Cole and Sinatra and Johnny Mathis. You ever, you ever think about doing an album like that? Yes, yes, I'm thinking about it now. I'm thinking about thinking about doing a few albums. I have a few albums to do. I have to, obviously, you know, the uh, uh, Inside Out has been uh, received so well. I have right. to do a follow-up to Inside Out. And uh, I have to do a follow-up to my last record, The Bura. Right. Which was also received really well. Uh, so I have to do those. And uh, the third project that I'm working well, um, I'm, I'm between originals and standards, but uh, I'm, I'm planning to make a record with an orchestra. Oh, wonderful. Man, that would be awesome. <laughs> yeah. That would be awesome. Now, do you plan on doing any touring you know, to support your album and maybe after the Stones tour? Yes, absolutely. As soon as the Stones uh, tour is over, I'll uh, go out and do some inside-out gigs. Right. And um, at some point, uh, you know, I'm going to... I've already started plans for the next inside-out record. I've started making some plans. So, you know, I'm going to be flying to Uruguay to uh, record some... Some uh, drummers there, some master drummers there, just uh, to get uh, the next Inside Out started. Awesome. Well, I'm, I'm friends with Billy Cobham. That'd be a nice drummer to. <laughs> <laughs> I can see you and, and Billy so Cobham. Billy, Billy's great. I mean, he's got a he's got a he's got a brother that plays the mean trumpet also. Really, I didn't know that. Oh huh. yeah. Oh yeah. How about that? <laughs> well, the, the new album Inside Out, I love it. Um, I gave it five stars, if that's okay with you. That's, I only go up to five. <laughs> oh, man, that's awesome. Thank you so much. I appreciate that. I, I, lo I love the style. You know, it kind of reminds me, you remember the old Beatnik days with the, the bongos when they used to do the spoken word? I do. That You know, that was before the hippies, of course, but they had the little goatees, yeah. you know, and, you know, I always think of uh -huh. me. Yeah. It, it kind of reminds me of the the, the, uh, the like the beginning of all that, but uh, yes, that was definitely in mind when uh, when I was recording it. You know, I wanted it to I wanted to take it back, you know, back to you know, kind of kind of the beginning of the whole spoken word thing. Yeah, I, I love it, man. My favorite song, of course, is Sister Morphe. You got good taste. <laughs> That's one of my favorites. <laughs> And, and That's you, one of my favorites. It's an incredible, incredible piece of music. Guys. It is. Oh man, you guys, you guys killed it. You, the, uh, the the brass set section was incredible. Uh, you've got um, is it uh, Keon Harold playing trumpet? That's right. That's Keon. Keon. Keon Harold is, is doing all that trumpet work, and Keon Harold. Keon Harrell did all the trumpet work in the uh, Don Cheadle, Miles Davis movie. Right. All the trumpet that wasn't Miles Davis was Keon. Wow. Because, you know, it does sound like Miles on the record. Yeah, he does. Yeah, he does. I, I, I just love it, man. That That's definitely, I, you know, I listen to that over and over again. The the, the, uh, the the song that really stuck in my head over and over again was Tie You Up. I got those lyrics in my head for a long time. <laughs> <laughs> I couldn't get it. Those lyrics are really, really, really strong. It's amazing, you know. Uh, it's amazing. I don't think, uh, like, I, like I said, people hear it. They've heard, they've heard the Stones do it. Right. But they never really heard what was being said. Exactly. <laughs> you know, you can... Yeah. You can do that with so many artists because there are a lot of artists you you can't understand, you know. <laughs> yes, that's, that's true. But you know, uh, you know, but when you dig in, when you dig in to understand it, you may not want to uh, do it. <laughs> you know, not all of not all of not all of it is as good as you know what uh, Keith and Nigga write. Right, that's true. And, and of course, uh, sympathy for the devil, man. That was like it was made for the spoken word. I think you know. Yeah, well, sympathy for the devil. The only reason I did sympathy for the devil was because a, I ran out of money. <laughs> b, I ran out of time. I had to go on the road and do some gigs, so I had to, uh, you know, I had I had to put 
I had to get something really quick and simple to do for the devil was easy for me to do. Right. You know, I, I, uh, that's the only song that I did that I kept the chord progression. It's a great version, man. It's it's a it's an incredible cover. And uh, Tom waits uh, t- time waits for no one's another one. That's another favorite of mine. Yes, yes, another one with the great rhythm section. Vince Wilburn on drums, Daryl Jones from the Stones on bass. Yep. George uh, Evans and, and the great Ray Parker Jr. Exactly. Yeah, I love Ray Parker Jr. I go back to the you know his radio days. You know, uh-huh. great band. Really good band. Great band. Great yeah. band. Great player. Ray Parker Jr. is an incredible player. He is. Incredible player. I was really lucky to get him. Uh, I was going to mention, you know, I, I grew up with, uh, you know, rock rock and roll, of course, but I, I love soul music and I love R&B. You know, I'm originally from D.C. And uh, I think your next, your next gig with the Stones is at FedEx Field, isn't it? Yes, we... Uh, yeah, that's my old stopping grounds there, man. <laughs> all right, all right. That's a huge stadium, by the way. Yes, it is, and they will fill it. <laughs> Definitely. <laughs> you know, you got to give a lot of credit to the Stones for all these years, you know, and still selling out stadiums. Not, not many bands can still do that, you know? Mm, yeah, they're... They're one of a kind, and you know they're still playing. They're still playing at such a high level, and I think that's probably the reason why they can just, why they've gone on so long is because you know they they can still perform at that level. You know they can still outperform the people at thirty days. How, how does Mick feel be between shows? My my dad and my brother both had the same procedure that Mick had. And uh, you know today they do wonders. You know you're in hearts heart, the heart. You know, they go in and out pretty much. Yeah. How's he doing? Yeah. Yeah, he's doing great. I, I can't. Doing great. I can't believe the shape he's in. You know, he, it's incredible. Yeah. He really takes care of himself. Yeah. Incredible. And, and, incredible. Yeah. I don't. I don't see him slowing down any time soon. Well, Bernard, you're in good shape too, man. We're about the same age, and. Uh, you know, just wait to your next birthday. It's it's not going to be easy to hit sixty. <laughs> hey man, the gym works wonders. The gym works wonders. The gym and good music keeps you young. Well, that's that's what kept me alive all these years. <laughs> yep, that's what's keeping me alive. <laughs> Here, here's a little story. I I interviewed Kenny Aronson. You know, the great bass player. Uh, he, he was with the Stories, and uh, he was with the New York Dolls, and now he's with the Yardbirds. Yeah. Kenny Ken auditioned for the Stones back in '94, uh-huh. and uh, you know he, he they they played a bunch of songs. He spent the whole day there, and I think it was Keith Richards. Uh, you know they they had a refrigerator there, and they he, they asked if he wanted some. Uh, I think they had like vodka vodka coolers or something like that. And they wanted him to drink with them, and he he turned it down. He says that's that's probably why I blew the audition. <laughs> well, uh, maybe that's what he thinks, but you know, I, I think Daryl Jones beat him out. Yeah, I think so. I think you're right. <laughs> <laughs> I, I like your uh, your shirt, by the way. I'm not Daryl Jones shirt. <laughs> yeah, we had to get those. Sh- you know, I got those shirts made for me and Daryl because he walks up the street and people call him Bernard, and I walk up the street and people call me Daryl. And you know, I've only been with the Stones. I've only been working with the Stones for thirty years, and people are still <laughs> oh, making that mistake. You know, yeah. I've been like thirty, thirty-one years. Daryl's there twenty-five years, I guess. And people still make that mistake, so I thought, you know, just one day I had enough. I said, I got to get this T-shirt made. That's incredible. That's great. I love it. <laughs> <laughs> that that should be on the front covers or of uh, one of your albums, I think. <laughs> yeah, I'm thinking about it. Putting that in, yeah, that'll be the title of my next album. <laughs> I, that, I like that. <laughs> <laughs> well, one of your influences, I think, is Gil Scott Heron, right? Yeah, he is one of the influences, yeah. 
Yeah, I was very lucky uh, to see Gil Scott Heron when he first started out at Lisner Auditorium. And there was maybe, I don't know, 20 people there. You know, they were brand new. But the uh, the opening act was my cousin's was was my sister in law's cousin's band ca- called Sabata, and uh, I got to hang out with them. And it was when they came out with uh, you know what what's the word what's the word in Johannesburg you know that song right. But right. yeah, they they you know I, I never really appreciated them till later in life, and it's it's amazing. You know the 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 uh, the writing and the and the the thought process behind that behind that band. They, they were they were an excellent band. Well, Gil Scott Henry was a super talent, way, yep. way ahead of his time. Oh, definitely, definitely. <laughs> I can hear a little... Yeah, but, uh, and I actually got to work with him. Oh, you did? I got to work with Gil Yeah, I got to work with him on an album, yeah. <clears throat> Yeah, it's a shame. I, you know, it's a shame he's not around anymore either, because you know his his uh, his music influenced so many people. Yes, it did. Yes, it did. But you know, the work, good work, lives on forever. Yes, it does. Yep, he, he, I, I like a lot of his songs. We almost lost Detroit, the Angel Dust, you know, which was, you know, a, a, something very big in in the D.C. area. I can tell you that. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> The Revolution Will Not Be Televised. So many great songs. A lot of great songs. A lot of great songs. Um, so how is it working with the Stones? <laughs> how is it working with the Stones? I mean, so, man. It's, uh, you know, the world's greatest rock and roll band. You right. know, they've been around a long time. They know how to do it. They know how to get you to the gig. They know how to get you from the gig. And damn, they they know how to play. It's it's an incredible experience. I, you know, I'm lucky and blessed. And, you know, there's a lot of there's a lot of good a lot of good singers out there. And I've been uh, I've been the lucky one. I was chosen. Right. Yeah. You know, and uh, whenever they decide to go on the road, they call me every time. So. You know, working with the Stones is a treat, man. There's nothing else like it. I think in your case it was fate because I think one of the first albums that you like, you were turned on by, I think your dad or somebody, was a Stones album. Is that right? The uh, first album, I, the first album my dad gave me was right. a Stones album. Wow, yeah, that's true. That's that's uh, yeah. It was uh, Twelve by Five was the album. Right. Ah. Uh. I, I, I kind of saw some of the um, the ritual that Mick does like before a show, which is pretty cool. Uh-huh. You know how he kind of you know concentrates and you know I guess he's like the the last one to come out. But uh, yeah, they're they're amazing. I saw I saw the Stones back in seventy four. You know, right. a long time right. ago. Yeah, with Billy Preston. I think they had Billy Preston in the band, and uh, it was the uh-huh. first first year that. Uh, Ron Wood was there, I think. Wow. Yeah. That's great. Yeah, Stones, the Stones always kept, always kept good company. Always. <clears throat> they, they used to be known for coming out a little late, but I think they fixed that problem. <laughs> yeah, those were the good old bad days. <laughs> I, I I saw in an interview that you uh, you know you wait for cues, but you always what you're always watching Mick, I guess, for cues, huh? He's he's the main man. Well, I mean, I'm always watching Mick. I'm yeah. always watching Mick. That's my job to watch Mick. Right. You know, you know it's not a it's not a conventional conventional uh, type of gig. You know, every you know it doesn't always you know. It doesn't always happen the same from night to night, so you need to be paying attention in case you know, in, in case it's different from the night before. And the only the only way that you can do that is to watch. Right. So I keep my eye on them. Man, I I admire you guys not not only for your music, but just for the touring. You know, and and going from place to place, and the jet lag, and you get tired, and it's you know that's it's not easy. It's not easy at all. No, it's not easy, and it's not for everybody. No, not it's at not all. For everybody, I think people, you know, people think, oh, oh wow, what a great life, great life. Yeah, it is, but it's not for everybody. Right. You know? And uh, a lot of people just can't can't take the pace. They can't take the pace of it, or they 
they can't stand being away from home too right. long. Right, yeah, yeah. You know, and if you're one of those people, the road is not for you. Exactly. Now, do, do you have you, you have a family? Do you have kids, grandkids? Yeah, I do. I have kids. Do, do you have grandkids yet? I have some. <laughs> I have some. <laughs> yeah, I've got four. <laughs> oh, do, do, do you beat for you? Do you beat me or who, who's ahead there? <laughs> no, no, no. I keep that stuff to myself. Oh, okay. I is that part of my, part of my <laughs> <laughs> well, they're fun. All I can say is they're a lot of fun, and I'm 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 so blessed to have four at this at this yeah. time. Yeah, they're they're wonderful. You you um. You, you were a big basketball player as well, right? I was in my early days, uh, you know, uh, growing up uh, for a second, I thought I would do that. I thought I would play ball. Uh, I ate, slept, and drank it and played it 24-7 uh, all the way up until uh, high school when the coach found out I was singing with the, was singing with the band after practice. He gave me an ultimatum. I was going to quit the band and just play basketball, you know. Right. Or he was going to kick me off the team. Huh. And uh, I told him, I gave him the finger, told him that you, and I quit. Yeah. I never played again. Wow. Well, I guess you made the right decision. <laughs> well, you know, uh, I was forced to make that decision, you know. That, yeah. That, you know, that. That was not a that was not a good teacher, you know, because you know it wasn't like I was missing any any practices. You know, I played varsity basketball when I entered high school. I've always played with people older than me, and a lot of guys I played with ended up playing ended up playing, you know, NBA ball. Right. And you know, I could have done both. Who knows? I could have done both, but you know, he forced that he forced that on me, and you know. And um, I was blessed to be able to, you know, make it in this business, which is not easy to do. Yeah, it's, it's extremely hard to do. It's not easy to do. What what uh, position did you play? I was a power forward. Oh, power forward! Wow. So you you're yeah. you're, you're pretty tall then, right? Yeah, six, six, about six three. Oh, six three. Okay, yeah. Well, six three, which is you know these days is small, right? It's yeah. small for somebody you know that plays in that position. Yep. But uh, yeah, I had a I had a good uh, I had a really good vertical leap, and I was pretty quick and you know agile for you know for for a big person. I'm still a little. I'm still pretty agile. <laughs> Do you still play? Do you still fool around on the court? No, I might shoot around. I don't play, man. That's for the that's for the young cats, man. <laughs> my, my, basketball, my basketball days are over. Oh man, I, I figured you'd be you know looking for some schoolyard on tour or something, you know. No, man. No, man. I can't afford to get hurt. I don't want to be limping on stage. That's true. Yeah, you can't afford to get hurt. I forgot about that. Uh-uh. Yeah. Who, who were some of the guys you admired playing basketball? You know, Sam Worthy. You know, I, I man, we talked a long time ago. You know, yeah, we talked about Willis, Reed, Butcher, Earl the Pearl, Bud Bro. Oh yeah, yeah, he was a hero of mine, you Earl the Pearl. Yeah, thing, you know, yeah, Sam Worthy. As a matter of fact, they used to call me Sam Worthy. Oh really? Yeah. Huh. You know, a guy I really admire is Connie Hawkins because you know he started in the schoolyard, and you know Dr. J. I watched, I grew up watching him play. Yeah, he's he's incredible. He's really you know, incredible. I went up, you know, as a kid, they used to go to the pro rucker and watch the guys, you know, Herman Helicopter, Joe Hammond. Right. Yeah, I saw all the old players. You, you grew up in uh, New York. I grew up in New York City, Queensbridge Project. Right, right. Made famous by the rapper Nas. Oh wow! Yeah, my my family grew up in uh, Bensonhurst. Mm-hmm. In that neighborhood. So. Oh, right on. So you're from New York, also? Well, all my family is. I'm, you know, I was born in Baltimore, and then uh, we moved down to in the D.C. area. Right, right. 
Yeah. Oh, very cool. Yeah, but yeah, we used to go to New York all the time, visit family over in Brooklyn. It was uh, it was an yeah. experience. <laughs> Definitely a different world. <laughs> oh yeah. <laughs> I heard you, uh, did you tour with Steven Seagal? Say again? Uh, Steven Seagal? Uh, I read somewhere that you, you toured with him. You're breaking up. Oh, okay. Uh, I heard you tour, uh, Steven Seagal. I'm only, I'm only messing with you, man. Uh, I did something to you. <laughs> uh, w w what's he like as a, uh, a performer? Not much of a performer. <laughs> I mean, he plays guitar. Okay. He plays guitar. I think all his performing is done in film. He's not a, you know, he's not such a great stage performer. Right. He plays a, he plays a decent guitar, but you know, you know, I think it's more of a hobby for him. Yeah, a lot, a lot of those guys are doing hobbies now. You know, they, they think they yeah. can, they, they can also sing and perform and be a rock star besides being an actor. Just want to be rock stars. That's right, Johnny Depp. There you go. Yeah, did you meet Johnny Depp? I know he hangs around Keith a lot. <laughs> no, Johnny, a long time. Really? Is, is he a pretty yeah. good? Do you think he's a pretty good guitar player? Yeah, he's good. He's a decent guitar player. Yeah. Well, then we got to give him credit, I guess. <laughs> no, no. I give anybody credit, you know, with balls enough to strap it on and go for it. Yep. Yeah, I agree. And you played, uh, man, you played with Lemmy, right? That was the uh, Orgasmatron no, I album? Never, I never played with Lemmy. I recorded, I, I doubled all of Lemmy's vocals for Orgasmatron album. Right, right. And uh, let's see, some of the other guys, Duran Duran, I think you're on that album, and uh, Ozzy. Yeah, Duran Duran, I doubled Ozzy's voice for... Uh, for the Beavis, Beavis and Butthead soundtrack. Oh, wow. And uh, uh, I did a record with Alice Cooper called The Long Tail the Spider. Huh. And uh, there's a song on there that, for some reason, people think is a duet with Ozzy Osbourne and Alice Cooper. Right. And I want you and the listeners to know that that is a lie. Okay. It's not Alice Cooper. And Ozzy Osbourne, but that is Alice Cooper and Bernard Fowler. All right, doing you, Ozzy Osbourne. You heard it here. <laughs> well, yeah. So I mean, I did. I've done that for you know. I've done a lot of stuff for a lot of uh, really great artists. You know, I worked with John Lydon on uh, on on the Till album, right? The Public Image Limited. Uh, I worked with John on uh, the album called Album. I was his vocal coach for that album, and I did all the uh, all the uh, choral arrangements. I did all them, and I didn't just arrange them; I sang them all. Right, right. <laughs> now you're you're an incredible artist, man. You you've uh, you've, you've been there. You, you've done it all, just about. You know. You know, I've been uh, I've been given a gift, and you know. Um, um, it's a blessing. It's a blessing for sure. And you know, when you have a gift, you know, as such, you're supposed to share it. That's right. That's right. I agree yeah, with you. I, I do. I try to share it. You know, I'd, I'd still, I'd love, I'd also love to see you do an R and B album. You know, because I know you would nail it. One day later. I've had uh, recently on my show. I had Mitch Ryder this week. Jess Scump Baxter, uh, 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 William King from the Commodores, which he, he's such a great guy, man. Uh, he, he misses his buddy Lionel. You, do you know? Yeah, of course. Do you know Russell Bizet? He's a uh, jazz drummer. He play, no, I don't. He played with Jose Feliciano. He's a and he's a studio guy. Uh, I had Dennis Coffee on the show from the Funk Brothers. Uh, wow. Yeah, man. Funkio. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> Very cool. Marilyn McCoo and Billy Davis Jr. I, lo I love them. Uh -huh. And uh -huh. and here's a guy that I'm trying to help out. I don't know why he's not bigger than he isn't. It's Vicky Womack. He's a nephew of Bobby Womack, and he is awesome. You know, he's like he's kind of a rock and soul type guitar player, 
He loves rock and roll. He reminds me of you a little bit, you know, his taste of music and everything. Because, mm. you know, Bobby Womack was such a great artist. Yeah, I knew his uncle. I uh, actually, I used his uncle on uh, the last Ronnie Wood record that I produced. Oh, really? Yeah. Huh. Here's a question I'm going to ask you that uh, I get some interesting answers, and it's going to be hard for you to answer because you, you've been around and you you know so many artists. If you had a Feel the Dreams wish, like the movie, to perform or collaborate with anyone from the past or present, who would that be? Wow. That's you, a hard question. Yeah, you've been with everybody, so it's going to be tough. You can go back, you know, then back to Jimi Hendrix or even... You know, the blues days or whatever. That's a hard question. <laughs> wow. Who would I collaborate? I, I don't know. I don't know if I could just name one. It would probably be a few. All right, you can name a few. Name a whole band it would if you probably want. probably be a few. You know, uh, well, I'd probably, well, the Stones would probably be one of them. You know, since I spent so much time listening to them, maybe Joni Mitchell. Joni Mitchell. Uh, maybe Neil Young. Yep. Uh, Sly Stone. Oh, I love Sly, man. Uh, yeah, it's just so many of them. So many of them, you know. Uh, you know, the Temptations, even. Yep. It, it's, so, it's so many. That's a really hard question. How about Hendrix? I think so. I think so. Yeah. I asked uh, Robin Trower the same question. He came up with James Brown, believe it or not. And then, and then I told him, well, what about Hendrix? He said, nah, heck, I'd be ashamed to play with Hendrix. <laughs> well, well, I wouldn't be trying to play with Hendrix. I'd be trying to sing for him. That's right. You'd be perfect with Hendrix. <laughs> yeah. So what, what do you do in your spare time, if you have any spare time? <laughs> Oh, you fish, huh? Fish, uh, you know, the occasional, the occasional hunting trip. Right. You know, I don't, I don't fish or hunt for trophies. If I fish, I'm eating it. Right, right. You don't throw them back. If I'm, hunt, if I'm hunting, I'm eating it. Right. I don't, I don't do, I don't do trophies. <clears throat> what, where do you, where do you hunt at? Austria. It's probably the last. A uh, couple of times I went hunting was in Austria. Right. What what do you what do you uh what are you shooting? What what kind of animal? Wild wild, wild boar. Oh, wild boar, really? <laughs> yeah. We got a lot of those down here. Yeah, so I heard. Yeah. <laughs> and the fishing's pretty good down here in Florida. <laughs> oh man, the fishing's excellent in Florida. I think the tour finishes there and I'm trying I'm uh, planning to make a fishing trip while we're there. That's right, Miami, at the Hard Rock Stadium. Yep. That's it. That's it. Yeah, man, I'm, I'm in uh, in the Sarasota area, uh, just south of Tampa. And uh -huh. So I'm on the Gulf Coast. Nice, nice. <clears throat> well, Bernard, you got anything, uh, else, anything else you want to add? I mean, uh, I'm going to promote the hell out of your album. <laughs> man, I appreciate it. I think this covers pretty much everything, but, man, thank you for the love, man, and thank the, the record's really great. Like the record. it, it's it's very very different. Uh, it reminds me a lot of the you know, like I said, a lot of the old days. Um, yeah. I look forward to a lot more music from you. I know we love the Stones, but we want to hear a lot more of Bernard Fowler. You know. Well, it's coming. It's coming. I just need a little time to get it together, but it's definitely coming. Good man. Thank you so All much, right. Bernard, and uh, come to Florida, uh, you know, on your own, you know, not with the Stones, but come come to Florida with, uh, you know, as a solo artist. Yes, 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 that's the plan also. Awesome. That's part of the plan. Thank you again for the interview. I really appreciate it. At any time, Bernard, keep in touch and, and have fun on the tour. I will do. Take care. All right, man, you too. Take care. Uh, okay, bye-bye. Bye-bye. Purchase the latest album from Bernard Fowler entitled Inside Out at Amazon.com. Give it five stars. It is a really, really good album. For more information about Bernard Fowler, visit 
Uh, www.bernardfowler.com. That's his official site. Bernard's also on Facebook. Look him up on Facebook. And uh, also, how about the Rolling Stones official website? www.rollingstones.com. Very special thanks to Jill Richmond of Rhyme and Reason Records for arranging this interview with Bernard Fowler and, of course, the dynamic duo of Doug and Don Newsom of BBS Radio for making the magic happen for each and every broadcast of Interviewing the Legends. If you have comments or suggestions for the show, contact me at interviewingthelegendsgmail.com and please subscribe to my YouTube channel, uh, Interviewing the Legends with Ray Shasho, for the very latest interviews. It's real news. And don't forget to purchase a copy of my book entitled Check the G's, the true story of an eclectic American family and their wacky family business. Available now at Amazon.com. And I promise you will live it. Have a great week, everybody. Thank you, everybody, for listening to Interviewing the Legends. Brought to you by the Publicity Works Agency. Call 941-877-1552 or visit us at publicityworksagency.com. Specializing in author and music artist publicity plans. We shine when we make you shine. Tune in to Interviewing the Legends. Every Tuesday at 7 p.m. Pacific Time on BBS Radio, Station 1.